Yo, this is W Soul 13 bringing you Raid Shadow Legends, and we are pushing up the gold again. <laughs> so, why are we doing this? Looks like they bought the they brought the bot teams back out, and they have a wonderful quality of life change, which is we can see the power now from the main battle page. So that's awesome. Uh, and I'm gonna go through and use up all my tokes and see what we get. See if we can get the gold four right now. Gold four. Gold four. <laughs> yes, my son. There we go. So let's put it right there. Trudy, say hi to the folks. <laughs> it's okay, dude. There we go. So I'm gonna explain how my team works real quick. All right, let's see. Uh, okay, so let's go through who I avoid. All right, so usually torment, I avoid torment. Um, this one, Deacon. Okay, Deacon, I'll fight. All right, so it's just a matter of who goes first with that one. It's pretty much a coin toss between him and my High Katoon. All right, so the team goes High Katoon, Umbral Enchantress, up. He's got a Ross card with... Okay, so... We can probably fight that again. Just to, just to show you guys how I will play it differently. Yeah. With Umbral. So, instead of just mindlessly going through Arena, just like what I did, you could do this. Which is, okay, so he has um, immunity set on, but if you put block debuff on right now, there you go. Nobody else would get the block debuff on. The problem is, are you going to survive the nukes? Nope, you're not. So that's kind of another way to play, play Umbral, right? If you can make sure your team kind of goes in succession. But the strength of my team in particular is not that it can go off in order one two three four it's more like one and two are in speed sync and then number three and four are kind of slow but hit hard right I'll show you the stats later so let's see who i'm avoiding here i'm avoiding um god what is this guy's name the fusion champ the dark elf dude I forgot his name. What is his name? Foley. Oh, Giver. <laughs> he looks like Giver, doesn't he? Okay, so reason why I avoid Foley is because I am a control team. What I call a control team. You can check that out in my guide on Reddit, right? Control team is basically speed booster in sync with the second champ, which is going to be control champ. In my case, Umbral Enchantress. You shut down the whole team for at least one turn. Gives your debuffer and nuker time to go off so this is a fight i'll fight right here right fushan so the only speed boosters i avoid is typically arbiter and lissandra so those are the, the only two ones i avoid so why do i have high Katoon out here instead of arbiter well my arbiter is built more for dungeons and i'm still using her for dungeons and it also kind of like makes the team a lot more, uh, I don't know, achievable since you won't be able to get Arbiter without getting the gold for, right? So now it's a great time to build a team similar to this in my opinion. So we're done with this page. I'm going to spend gems and here we go. We get bots. So once you get bots, you're just going to clear them as fast as you can. Right. We're farming bots. What up, boy? Oh, you're good. <laughs> yep. So the bot pages are back. You should definitely try to get the gold for right now. So what would your philosophy be um, if you're farming or trying to push? All right. So for pushing, um, and frankly, I think for farming now too, I would spend gems. The reason why is because we know these bot pages are not permanent. 
They've said it before when they first put the bot pages out, and they have taken them out, right, for a while. So I say, like, get in there right now. Oh, Duchess is actually somebody I avoid, but I saw real quick that this was a low-power team, right, right there, 42K power, right? See, that, that just makes it easier now, you know, because you can see the power right away and if there's like a giant power difference between you and your team it's not always correct but in general it does kind of indicate whether you can just kind of like weather the storm you know even if your if your sequence doesn't go off correctly right um so the team has war maiden and high Katoon, uh both of which are part of what i call the f2p trinity right if you're continuing the f2p trinity concept which is going to be your starter war maiden then high Katoon, right if you're going to be following that concept uh well dark elaine would be kale or elaine or whoever it is that you pick as your starter right um, i think with the new with the new patch coming elaine is actually even better on auto now because you can actually have her pick her harder hitting um i think it's her a3 that's harder hitting right Mommy, so you can pick her harder hitting ability okay so let's go through the list real quick all right so biggin is somebody i might avoid right if so this is kind of like a 50 50 fight for me because my debuffer and nuker are kind of fragile so if biggin gets off even with an a1 he could kill one of my guys so let's see what happens, right? So we're gonna try to provoke. We got the provokes off, and no counter attacks. So the thing you're kind of looking out for there is the counter attacks from Biggin. Um, okay, so 130k power. I have a 130k power team, and they have Duchess. So Duchess is somebody I avoid in general. The Sandra I avoid. Uh, Mortu Macab. I'll fight a Mortu Macab. It's a little bit high power, but we'll see. Usually, I, I'll fight the Mortal Mahabs. So this team is actually capable of bringing down higher power teams. It's just the way the team is built. My team is built kind of like, you know, heavier on damage, uh, no resist, and, ac and mostly just accuracy damage, you know. So um, the way Raid calculates power is kind of skewed more towards crit chance and resistance for whatever reason. So yeah, see, you can beat a higher power team like a 1-200 power team almost. All right. So another another person I try to avoid in Arena is a Hegemon. Okay. My goal is to hit go speed boost control. He messes up with that groove with the lockouts, right? Uh... This one, I'll fight. So this is, who's this? Prince Kaimar. So Prince Kaimar technically should be as fast as uh, Arbiter Lissandra team. I think they have a similar um, speed aura. But what you're looking for there is their actual speed booster, you know. And, um, like, Kaimar isn't really the best speed booster for Arena. I mean, he can be your speed booster for Arena. You know, the, the problem with doing it that way is um, you're kind of, like, limiting his options, you know. Uh, I think it might be more feasible to do it now once they change the AI. The, the reason I'm saying it's kind of like not as feasible is because um, you kind of want him going off at the right turn for your dungeon runs, right? So here's another one that I kind of avoid, not all the time, but usually I avoid, is Skull Crown. I don't have anybody that can take out Unkillable from the team, so I usually will avoid Skull Crown and then another Hedgy. So I'm done with this sheet. I'm just going to hit refresh until I finish off all of my tokens or when we get to gold 4. Maybe I'll spend a few gems to get us to gold 4. So yeah, this is um, a high cartoon based team. So usually those I challenge. The reason why is my high cartoon is actually pretty fast. 300 speed high cartoon. So you... Um, you know, it's kind of exaggerated to think. So, Arbiter, we skip, right? So, Duchess, we're skipping that one. Arbiter, skipping that one. Arbiter, skip, skip, skip. Uh, we're skipping that one. This one is Ignatius. So, this is kind of like a high toughness theme with Krisk in it. 
So Chris, usually I don't fight because he makes my debuffer and attacker a lot less powerful. So this one I'll fight. That's a high cartoon based team. I'll fight this one. And what you're kind of hoping for is you can fish out as many as you can with before you get to the bot pages, right? So the most kind of like maybe the most token efficient way is just to refresh till you get to the bot pages. But in, in my case, I, I want to save some gems too. You know, I don't want to keep refreshing unless I really, really have to. Because gems are kind of cool in this game. They do a lot of stuff for you. So here we go. It's so, all right. Arbiter, we're skipping. Solo guy, we're taking that. Easy tokens right there. Easy medals. So this is also a good way for you to stack up medals right now, especially if you're stuck in any of the Arbiter missions. To try to get Arbiter, right? Um, whenever they put the bots out, your focus should be Arena. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. Especially because of how hard Arena can get. Okay, this one is... Gorgrab, I'll fight. The problem is Coronar, I'm not really fond of fighting because he can lock my team out, right? I think the A1 is an AoE decrease turn meter move or something like that. So usually Coronar, I won't fight. Because even if I'm ahead of him, if he gets a counter attack off, it kind of ruins my groove. With someone like Biggin, I could maybe survive a counter attack from Biggin. Okay, so this is an example of me getting outsped. But, okay, so, here we go. This is, this is the reason why, this is the reason why right here, that control teams are far and ahead to me. If, as a, if you're an F2P low spender, you should be building a control team. The reason why is because it is extremely hard to speed tune a speed team, you know? To go like speed boost, um, speed boost debuff, or speed boost, speed boost buff debuff, then nuke, right? It's very hard to have them go off all at the same time without getting cut, you know? Whereas if you're speed tuned from just your speed lead to your control champ, even if you get cut in between, they're provoked. You can't do anything. So now I have a chance to win. Even if I don't win, I have a chance. See, like there, right? So that's the reason why I feel like control champs are the superior option for F2P low spenders. This is kind of like bait right here. Arbiter, Chris, and who is that guy? I don't know who that guy is. Is that Necrit? Who is that guy? Oh, it's Angar. Okay. Yeah, so this team would be pretty tough to take down, I think, even if it's just three members. And we got a bot page. Great. So, yeah, once you get a bot page, just go to town, man. Take it all. <laughs> Make sure you don't refresh out of it. That's that's the only, only strategy that you'll ever need for this, all right? So, yeah, even me... Um, I've been playing this game, what, a year and five months now? If I'm not using Arbiter, so I'm not really playing to my full potential because I'm not using Arbiter. But if you're not using Arbiter and the arena gets hard again, like they t take the bots away, it's tough. It's tough to stay in gold four. But here's the thing. Even if they do take the bots away from here on, I have a feeling that it's going to be... I'm not going to say um, easy, like with bots, right, to climb up the gold four. But they have created some inflationary pressure from bronze and silver arena. So how trophy inflation works in games like this is very simple. If you reduce the penalty for losing at the lower arenas, it invariably affects the higher arenas, even if you keep the penalties for the higher arenas the same. Because all those people that don't lose at lower, that um, don't get penalized at lower arenas, they rack up the points quick. And once those guys climb up to the higher arenas they're generally easier for you to pick up okay there we made it to gold four yay me you should also actively try to climb the gold four right now it's a great time to do it bots are out um build a control team all right 
look up my guide on Reddit. It's called the F2P Low Spender Arena Guide. All right. I'll see you guys next.